At first, when the city started closing, um, the first thing that hit me was I was supposed to have a solo show at Harcourt in May, so that got um, postponed a full year. So there was that, and then I sort of went into full mode panic that I wouldn't have access to my studio and wouldn't be able to work. When we found out that Harcourt was going to still let us be in our private studios, it was such a relief. And because deadlines got postponed or cancelled, so um, I was released of pressure of things that I thought that I had to do a certain way. And, and because of the weirdness of the situation, I don't know, it sort of allowed me to relax a bit more in my space and just, um, just a moment to take a deep breath and um, play a bit more. And really create in a new way so lots of experimentation and trying gathering new materials and trying new things without worrying about who's gonna see it so so many things are going online and then there's this this push to um, shift your practice into this online format but a lot of what I do really is immersive and tactile and even my two-dimensional paintings there's a visceralness to them and there's a lushness to them that just gets lost in this flat format. You know, everything mediated through the screen is almost depressing. And so, and I've missed the freedom of going to a gallery. Just looking at art and having that tactile experience, it's not the same experience seeing it online. So that's really hit home to me and, and I miss it deeply. I think a lot of people in different aspects of their life are coming to terms with priorities and what really matters because their existence has been shifted and the way they function in the world has been shifted. Having been a professional artist my whole adult life, when mostly that's music, you feel like you're always on the hustle, but there's nothing to hustle. The gigs are cancelled. It's, it's kind of relieved me of that, I always feel like I need to be looking for work, I need to be looking for work. And I've, it's allowed me the freedom to just focus. I think no matter what kind of creative person you are, music, painting, whatever, sculpture, whatever, mixed media, anything, when you're first forming and you're getting your passion for these things, um, there's, a, there's like a higher quota of romance and idealism in your, in your being. And, and I think because everyone's emotions are higher, we're, we're finding our way back to a bit of that. And so I, I find myself revisiting sort of uh, the things that fueled me. Uh, so coming to Harcourt during the lockdown, I was surprised with how quiet and, and how much solitude there was here. But if you did notice that somebody else was here and everybody was very respectful of each other's space, but it was, it was sort of a little joy in life. And you could wave at someone in the next studio and just say hi. Or, um, it, was, it was both, um, you, you felt secure, but there was those little surprises of happiness when you knew that there were other people around making art. <laughs> I'm a meaning maker, and I think every artist is. We, uh, you have to make meaning out of your world and, and how you interact with it. So my art, before the pandemic, I hoped, had a voice, but I feel that the pandemic uh, globally and individually has really shifted things and my work has become, well, it's still personal, but I hope that it will be even more of a voice and advocate for something that I believe in and something that is being missed in society overall and that's just very simply the, the beauty that comes out of aging. You know it was one of my concerns when all of this craziness started was gosh are they going to close it down um, and obviously if that had happened I get it but it was a lifeline that they didn't because it's sort of my home away from home. I'm in here a lot. I'm in here normally you know three four five days a week depending on what i'm teaching and um you know it's funny because it's been great and i've been coming but i haven't been as productive as i as i normally am and certainly for that first month it took me a while to figure out well how do i 
Where's the juice? How do I feel creative in this weird time? But what I found funny is how much of my older work started seeming relevant. I make work that's often about you know, dystopia or the collapse of things, or things burning. It's not funny, but it just suddenly seemed like there were this kind of feeling happening in, in the zeitgeist. And so I've continued to make that kind of work, but I have taken a pause and started thinking about, well, what? Where does that work go now? Pra practically speaking, galleries have been closed. You know, where do you, what do you show? You keep making huge work. You start making work that's a little more of the moment. One of the things I think about when I, when I think about art in the time of COVID is I think about friends and colleagues who are struggling. Um, a lot of artists have, you know, depended on theaters being open or, you know, performance spaces or artwork at galleries. And I know that it's now more than ever that we need artists in the sense that we are the ones who often take stock of what's going on and think about it maybe in a, in a different light, maybe in a way that you're not used to seeing, maybe in a challenging way. Often it's through those narratives, through fiction, through poetry and painting and dance that we are able to parse what's going on or take stock of where we are or think about it or challenge things. A lot of people talk about, oh, I wonder what will happen post-COVID. Will we try different things? Will we try things differently? Will we go back to how we were before? I don't know. But I think that even in some of the art that I've seen coming out of this so far, people are certainly taking stock of the moment and trying to understand it, whether visually or through music or whatever.